Hi guys, you're very welcome to another video from NarcCon. Today, I'm very happy to tell you that I am recording in Miami Beach, Florida. So I'm a very happy camper and there are no narcissists around, which is even better. So I tell you, you can heal from being with a narcissist. You can heal from narcissistic abuse and you can be extremely happy again. So if you're going through a hard time, please find hope in this shared experience and the shared experience of many people whom I talk to who have recovered. So just to start the podcast off with that, today I would really like to get into a topic that holds so many people back that holds, I think, everybody back that's been in an intimate relationship with a narcissist, and sometimes even a friendship, and sometimes even a family situation, where you're made to feel like the one. You're made to feel like the narcissist is the one, but you're also made to feel like you're the one. You're the only one for the narcissist. And it's this deep bonded feeling which is often referred to as the trauma bond that keeps so many people stuck in the recovery phase. It's, it keeps the ruminating coming and it keeps hope alive. It keeps us from the radical acceptance that the person we were with was a narcissist and that we need to move forward without this person. And that sometimes seems like an impossibility and i'm going to get into the reasons why but once you get through these reasons once you get through this stage of trauma bonding with a narcissist and you rediscover yourself you will thank the experience and i hope that's not triggering for anybody because it is a terrible thing to go through and sometimes the most pain brings us the most joy depending on how we navigate that pain for ourselves and the choice is yours it's a hard journey after you've been through this type of narcissistic abuse and no one can take that away from anyone but if you navigate this and you decide that you're going to make this awful experience into a positive outcome for you by delving into yourself and what you need from life and who you are and your own definition of yourself, then you can give yourself a gift in your recovery journey. So getting back on topic, as I often travel off topic and wander down the different roads of hope, is what I would say, wander down the different roads of hope that I really want you to hold on to if you're going through a hard time at the moment. We feel trapped post narcissistic abuse when we feel that we have something special with the narcissist that nobody else has. And that's why they keep coming back to us. This is a feeling that most of the narcissist victims or targets share. They believe also that they're the one that was the one for the narcissist. And that's why the narcissist keeps coming back. So how does this awful creature, this narcissist, create this illusion in perhaps four or five people who firmly believe they have something special with the narcissist and that the narcissist holds them in a special place. It's a process, guys, and once you understand it, you can release yourself from this illusionary trap. It's a psychological trap, it's a spiritual trap, and it's a soul trap. So don't let your life be put on hold, ruminating about a movie actor creature who has sold you a con, who has fraudulently captured your soul, your mind, your body and your spirit for a short time. Because you have the key to freedom once you radically accept 
that this is what's happened to you and let go of hope of this person becoming the person that they presented to you or that you believe they were. You have the key to your own freedom and that's what's so amazing in, in this. You don't have to waste any more time on this waste of space. Okay, so the narcissist creates this illusion of you being their special one and their being your special one and destiny and magical thinking and, you know, we found each other, we were always meant to find each other. I mean, this may well happen in truth with a genuine person, but the narcissist goes into every relationship with this scenario or this storyline. They love bomb you so much that you feel secure and so secure that they deep dive into your memories with you and they learn you and they become part of you because they get into the nitty gritty. Their interest in you at that stage is so intense that you tend to overshare because you feel like you found the one and they make you feel like you found the one. This forms a, a very deep bond on a soul level because perhaps you will share your deepest, darkest, nicest worst secrets with them to which they will hold over you at a later stage and punish you by often exposing these secrets but that's for another that's for another time so in the beginning you're deeply connected to them you may overshare and you feel very bonded to them and you feel there's something special going on here because no one else has taken that amount of intense interest in you so quickly. The next thing they will do is they'll tr triangulate you with their exes or other women or other men in your favor. Now they often will do this in the devaluation stage, not in your favor, you know, to compare you unfavorably to someone. But in this instance, while they're getting you hooked, they'll compare you favorably and you will feel elevated to a position of number one, the best at everything, the, the person the narcissist loves the most and who holds in the most high esteem. So they'll basically put you on a pedestal and they will make sure you know how valuable you are to them and how great you are by comparing you to other people that they've been with, other exes, etc., and other men or women. They will give you the most unusual sexual experience in that they seem to open up to you. They seem to want to explore everything with you. And even though they may suggest things that would be beyond your boundaries, they suggest things that are so beyond your boundaries that you want to reach over your boundary a little bit maybe not go to the extreme that they're suggesting, but you feel like when you go over your boundary a little bit, then you've explored your sexuality with them. And obviously this is a huge spiritual connection and a huge feeling of going to unknown frontiers with this person because you trust them and you may even trust them with things you'd never have done before. You may even allow them to take photographs. You may go beyond your normal boundaries with them. And again, be careful here because this may be used at a later stage when the narcissist wants to hold something over you. But for the purposes of this podcast, they intensely form this bond with you by an exploratory sexual experience and you feeling that and they make you feel that they haven't done this with anyone else before and that they've met you and you're the one and that's why they want to explore this area with you. The next thing that they will do is they will push and pull and we've often heard this in the podcasts on narcissism and the psychological damage a narcissist can do they will push and pull you through 
the heights, highs and lows, and more or less become your drug pusher. So they'll set you up to have wonderful experiences. You, all your pleasure hormones will be spiking and then they'll drop you the next day or they'll give you a mini discard or they'll disabuse you of how they feel about you to bring you down to an all time low. And of course, by isolating you and being them being your main source of validation, this can leave you in a very depressed position and then in a very elevated position. This takes quite some time to overcome when a narcissist has discarded you or you've left a narcissist. It takes quite some overcoming to re-regulate your pleasure hormone levels, your dopamine, your serotonin, your oxytocin. So one thing that's good about this is that in the recovery journey, if you have a structured approach to recovering post-narcissistic abuse, this is one of the things you can work on in a very logical way. You know, when you say, I don't ever feel I'm gonna get over this person. This is a positive thing you can do. And we go over this in coaching as to how you can re-regulate your hormone level. You know, it's a practical, logical step, which is great because it doesn't seem very logical when you're going through the stress and the trauma post-narcissistic abuse. Another thing that they really do is they get you to invest in helping them. They do come, come towards you sometimes as a victim and sometimes they don't. Sometimes they come towards you as a very successful person, but then they'll run into situations where they'll be in dire straits. They're always bouncing, if you can say, or falling into drama holes and they're always looking to be pulled out of that drama hole with you using your energy, you using your resources, rescuing them, and then they're fired up and ready to go again without having depleted any of their energy or resources. So when we invest in a person, when we invest in another person, we really help and, and love them. That bonds us to the person in a very familial way. And feeling that that person is reliant on you can also give you a huge bonding experience deep, deep down. You feel protective of that person. You feel they need you. And being feeling needed is a profound human, profoundly human experience. It's a profoundly empathic journey that we can go on if you're that type of person and that is how you identify and who you identify as you're basically giving off yourself and your identity and trust over to helping this person who then then becomes reliant on you so that's a complex area that's a complex one to find your way out of without damaging your idea of who you are, which is complex in the healing process. It's another way they make you feel that you are the one for them and the only one for them. Another thing that they do, guys, and this one, this one really confuses people. When people have sorted out every other aspect of what they went through with the narcissist, they'll say like, why do they keep coming back to me? Even five years later, they keep coming back to me. You know, we must have some deep, deep attraction for each other that no one else has. And that, you know, it gets them, we can never disconnect. That is a big illusion, guys. That's a big illusion. The narcissist has this hoovering cycle with at least four or five other people. Or if they're low on energy, they may have two people that they interchange with. So don't fall for that one. Particularly if you're a secondary source of supply, the narcissist has no problem dipping in and out with you because it's easy to. They've no commitment with you. When they feel low on supply, they know you're over there sitting on the shelf. 
waiting for them. They push your button, they get the supply and off they go. So that's not romantic. That's not romantic. That's using someone. But the feeling the person can get is the narcissist for the last 20 years has always been in touch with me, has hinted at the fact maybe that we could take things further and has always had some reason that we can't or I've had some reason that, that we can't. But there is this romantic idea built up that you're essential to each other and that you have a strong attraction and that you're traveling through life together and that eventually you'll be together. Don't fall for that illusion. The other thing is they tell you that you're the one. They actually tell you. And the narcissist words repeated often enough can actually get into our brain and stay in our brain. And it's a kind of a brainwashing gaslighting experience. But they tell you they need you. They tell you they want you. They tell you you're unusual. They, they come to you and say, you're the only one that can do this for me. And you know, you're the only one that understands me and you're special. I know you get the drift. So they tell you. They also tell your friends and family that how important you are to them. And they may tell them also that you have a hell of a lot of problems, but when they're on the up, when they're on the hoovering cycle, they'll be telling your friends and family, hoping and knowing it'll get back to you, that they can't live without you, that they're going through a hard time without you, that things were great with you and that you were special, etc., etc. So that, that is another thing they do. And I suppose the last thing that they do, and they all seem to do this, is they make and break commitments. But they do make huge life commitments to people that aren't actually commitments, but what we call commitments. Like by having children quickly with you, by making you feel when they meet you that they've made that big decision quickly because you're the one. You are the one. But this isn't to say that they haven't made that decision with three other people and have children with three other people unbeknownst to you. They'll make those type of important decisions quickly and try to force you into making those decisions quickly because they've made you feel like you're the one. They'll look for marriage, they'll look for you to sign contracts, they'll buy properties with you. And so many people have fallen for this. So that's really why I decided to do a podcast on it, because it draws people in the idea that they're the one and you're the one and he's the one and she's the one. And it stops people from moving toward the best part of their healing is that idea that we are in some way entwined throughout our lives to be at this person's beck and call because of a notion of romance or a notion of destiny that the narcissist plays up because it serves his or her purpose. That's all for now from sunny Florida guys and I'll be back with you in about four days time to make another podcast and to reconnect with you. I'm going to go out now in this beautiful sunny weather and feel the healing, feel the wonder of peace and wonderfulness, basically. Take care of yourselves and bye for now. We will see you again shortly.